Shabbat Shalom, my little peach and neen news. Hope everybody is good. I am great. I'm a bit tired. It's after midnight. I just got home from work a few minutes ago. Um, it was a busy Friday night at the restaurant. Uh, very busy. I can't believe I wasn't like totally insane and completely in the weeds and like in trauma. But that is just a testament to all the work that I've been doing to try to reprogram my um, neural pathways and change my neurology this year using the 2B magnetic work. Um, they're deep imaginings, the DIs. They're like these hypnotic meditations. Um, they're like these guided kind of therapeutic exercises, but there's a lot of like positive uh, results like after effects from doing them. But one has just been that I can handle so much more like sensory stimulation and a little bit more stress and anxiety than I used to be able to. Uh, like I used to be like, I used to find like waiting tables or like when a whole bunch of neat people needed me at once, I used to just find it like so overwhelming and like crazy and it would just like send me into a meltdown or like flight, fright or freeze. But I think I'm doing better. <laughs> I'm getting, I'm getting better now. I'm getting much better. Yeah, so tonight was good. Um, just a little tired from a job well done. Um, and yeah, it's been a wonderful week. I was absent last night because I was partying. <laughs> Instead of doing Thirsty Thursday on our video, I was just, I was having a Thirsty Thursday. I was out partying, having fun, had a nice dinner, and it was awesome. But tonight we back. We back for our extended reading and to talk about the cards that I pulled this morning for us on Instagram. Go follow me there. Um, Liz underscore Taylor underscore magic. Magic with a CK, just like this Light Love Magic channel. And Light Love Magic is on Instagram too. I'm just more active with my Liz Taylor. Um, and while we're at it, like and subscribe to this channel. I really want to grow this channel. You guys, I want to spread our message and you wouldn't believe how much and how much, like how much difference it makes for just like a few people to like and comment. It like broadens my reach by tens of thousands. It's crazy. I just realized I still have like ink all over me. I've had black ink <laughs> like that keeps appearing on my hands all night. And no matter how many times I wash them, they're just like stained with ink. And I even had like an alcohol wipe that I tried to. Like when I go out, I never have servers that have like ink busted all over their hand or anything and look all crazy. And I feel like when I'm a server, I always have like ink all over my hand and I'm like crazy. Somehow people still have a good experience. I do my best. Okay, enough about that. Enough goofing off. Opening monologues over. Let's get to the cards. So we have... A couple of cards that seem like real bummers to get, but all of them together, I think they're telling us something really helpful and actually not as bad as it seems. So first we have Ten of Swords, but this is the one of two cards, uh, one of two versions of Ten of Swords in Modern Witch Tarot. The other version is just Ten of Swords, but there's an extra version that says everything is fine. And so, to me, in this particular deck, it is just a double emphasis on the fact that the worst is behind us. And I think that was one of our cards that came up, like, within the last several days, too, was, like, it was, like, the worst is behind us now. But, yeah, so, like, the worst is behind us. This is really the end of a difficult period. The energy is really changing, and it's it's changing to the degree that we are correcting karma. Like we talk about tikkun, um, that's the Hebrew version of karma. It's like the soul assignments for this life. So it's like we've done all this tikkun healing, we've done our karmic healing, you know, or just like self-improvement and personal development, you know. And it's actually starting to show, and we are like entering into this like really big new cycle of life. It's like the, the sequel of our life beforehand, right? And so what we're, what we're facing right now is we're having these like moments of 
like these emotional waves of up and ups and downs. Like we'll have like disembodied anxiety or like straight up fear and scarcity that come, just seems to like hit out of nowhere or fear or sadness or grief of something passing or a moment of anger or like, you know, then it's like, you'll switch over to like clarity and Oh, feeling stable. And like, Oh, it's also clear now. And like revelation and elation and, excitement and inspiration and, and so it's like it kind of feels like we're insane but we're not we're awakening um maybe again maybe for the first time welcome if it's your first time <laughs> your whole life just fall apart sorry <laughs> no seriously i'm sorry if it did but like awakening it ain't no fun but what's on the other side of it is always amazing. And so it is a very tumultuous process, but on the other side of it, you feel like amazing and you realize that your whole life is up leveling and you feel different and you look at life differently and things affect you differently. So it's actually really great. And it's funny because, you know, sometimes it feels tempting to want to like turn your back on the spiritual life or the spiritual path or like, let me get rid of a notification. Um, you know, just kind of give up. You're like, oh, you know, it's, it's just these challenges and you know, don't I get to get to easy street? Like, what's the point of it all? And it's like, no, you never get to easy street. Life is going to present challenges and pain and toil either way. But if you are, you know, looking at it from a spiritual perspective, you're really taking, you're, you're empowering yourself, you're taking responsibility and you're learning how to find harmony and you know govern and balance the the forces that uh, you know at will right and so if you choose not to then you're just going to get like thrown around like a rag doll in the storm right so you might as well empower yourself you know it's like the laws of the universe are working whether you believe in them or you're participating or not so it's like manifesting right we're always manifesting and if you're not doing it with any intention, it's like being asleep at the will of a car. It's fairly dangerous because, you know, you can be manifesting like self-fulfilling prophecies and like horrible, like catastrophic, like a chaos, you know, things that you don't want. And just as easily, well, it's not just as easily with a bit of practice and like discipline, you can start actually intentionally ridding your life of a lot of that chaos and replacing it with harmony and flow and ease and, you know, eventually abundance. And then eventually you'll get so good at it that you can call in stuff almost at a whim, right? As long as you don't have too much resistance. So everything is fine. Oh, I just realized that my dehumidifier was on. So you guys probably just like heard this like background noise for like the whole time. Yeah. Dehumidifier. I have pulled. Okay. So pause, pause this. The whole fiasco with the air conditioner, like condensation that built up, it's a long story, long story, but my air conditioner coil got clogged and like the condensation started backing up and it created like gallons of water flooding the ventilation system. It then collapsed. It was a whole big thing. I've been drying out just the air of my house and I've pulled, I mean, the bucket that is in that machine is like at least a gallon, if not more. And I have pulled, I've emptied that bucket 18 or 19 times now, plus all of the water from the damp ribs. So I am nearly, have nearly pulled out 20 gallons of water out of the air of my house, y'all. I can't believe like I'm not just like walking around and like, just like underwater. Like it's like a, like an aquarium. It's crazy. I mean, is this normal? Has anybody ever been through this? It's insane to me. Right. <clears throat> so the end of a difficult period is is happening we are going into a brand new cycle so it's the end of one period the beginning of another the the worst is behind us all of the difficulty that we've experienced till now we don't have to keep continuing to experience this we're having a lot of like it can be tempting right now to feel anxious and scared and worried but it's really only because your your um neuro your neurology um hasn't gotten used to like the new life yet. We're not even familiar with like how to feel when things are like really fulfilling, right? <laughs> like so we have to teach ourselves 
to be comfortable at that level and not feel like the sense of foreboding, right? That's like creeping up on us. So there's no need to worry. Don't be worrisome. Don't be fretting. Um, don't feed your fearful thoughts. Don't focus on them. Don't feed your lack thoughts. Feed your abundant thoughts, you know, and have some behaviors that support being able to like manage that peace of mind. Like for instance, if you feel anxious about money and you're like, okay, I'm going to feel, I'm going to choose to feel abundantly. I'm going to try to calm myself down. I'm going to soothe my nervous system and I'm going to choose to think of things that make me feel abundant, right? And take my mind off of it. But don't also be like, oh, I'm so abundant. I'm just going to go ahead and go on a spending spree and like go through the same patterns that keep me in an anxious like scarcity state of lack, right? So you have to be paying attention to what you're doing. So don't worry, but practice like rigorous self-honesty and like self-awareness and mindfulness that you don't slip back into unconscious patterns or that the ego doesn't push you and steer you back into its familiar comfortable patterns, right? Or self-sabotaging behavior, right? So that's where the honesty comes in. It's like, okay, be honest with yourself, back to the abundance scarcity thing. It's like, okay, be, be honest in integrity. I feel anxious about money, so therefore I am going to see if I can, like for me example, I could pick up an extra shift if I would want to, or maybe someone else can pick up some overtime or however you want to do it. Maybe you can have like a side hustle that you, you know, score an opportunity with. If that's not the case, then, you know, maybe you want to cut back spending, but you have to be honest with yourself when you're saying, okay, I'm going to be abundant. I'm going to feel abundant. And I'm going to think abundant. Don't cheat yourself by going and like blowing a bunch of money and shooting yourself in the foot later is what I mean by like being honest with yourself. Like, like get real, be, be honest, be sincere with yourself, be in integrity with what your intentions are, right? Don't give yourself more to worry about, right? So pay attention to what you're doing and don't just generally speaking, try not to slip into the same patterns that you have been repeating, right? And if you come up against a challenge where you're like, I'm confused about which way I'm supposed to lean, think about it this way. What have you always done? What is, what have you usually, how have you usually handled the situation up until now, right? What come, what's the easiest for you, right? Is it speaking up or not saying anything? You're usually like when you're being pushed into a growth, a spiritual growth opportunity or a continued spiritual education, you're usually being asked to do whatever is harder for you to do or whatever is against your nature or whatever you don't usually always do. So just pay attention to how you handle things, how you have always handled things. Maybe you shouldn't be handling them the same anymore because we're going into a new cycle. We want to be new people. We can only be our new self, our higher self, our elevated self. And this isn't better. This is just the fact that like we are always pushing up against our growth edge, right? We're not better or worse. Like it's not that kind of thing. It's just that we're in a state of becoming, right? So we want to be this newer version of ourself that's closer to like the authentic self that's like connected it to the spirit and to the Holy Spirit and is not encumbered by the ego or all the baggage or the, you know, the, the experience that we've had up until now that has, you know, left a bad taste in our mouth or has, you know, kind of jaded the inner child, so to speak, right? So, so don't keep repeating the same patterns. This is the 10 of wands. This is someone who's working so hard and getting very little in return. This is someone who's over investing in something that is not going to yield anything that's gonna be that um, profitable. It's more trouble than it's worth. So, and this is also has to do with um, continuing to play out 
patterns, deeply ingrained unconscious patterns, negative ones that cost you, right? That Because this person in the Ten of Wands is usually like a little bit ragged, like her outfit looks pretty good, but usually they have this person like a little bit shabby and they're having a hard time carrying all the wands by themselves and it's just like this big laborious toil and they're not really getting much in return, right? So if we want to really end the cycle and if we we are going to be fine and we want everything to be fine then don't worry but pay attention and resist the urge to continue to play out old patterns resist the urge to respond the way that you have every time so far resist the urge to take that action that you always take or, you know, even if you think you're being proactive, maybe give yourself a little bit of space and time to pause and explore other options, right? You know, um, sometimes we just do something out of habit or whatever, and it might not, it might be something that's totally benign. Um, it's not even hurting anything or anybody, but maybe there's just like something better and super fun or super delicious that's waiting for you to choose it. And you're, you're just like, haven't because you just... I've been sort of like going through the motions, right? So be afraid to shake it up, live a little, <laughs> get your lust for life on, break your patterns, handle, like approach things differently than you usually do or the way that you always have before. Like for instance, if you are a super confrontational person, then life might be asking you to try to hold your tongue and um, you know, maybe be a listener, right? Instead of confronting and ask yourself why, you know, like what is your motive behind confronting? Do you need to adjust some things on your end to make sure that you're coming from a, a loving and productive and constructive place of a builder and not a destroyer consciousness, right? Are you trying to help the other person by telling them the truth in a loving, gentle way? Um, are they open to hearing it? Um, you know, is it your place? Is this the right time? There are a lot of factors to consider um, in confrontation, right? So that's another example. Like if you're the one that's always like, oh, I'm going to say something, then maybe like the challenge to break the pattern would be to like hold your tongue. If you're the person that is like, oh, I don't want to say anything and you're timid and you don't like to say anything and you try to avoid confrontation, then you are probably being challenged to be a little bit more assertive and to learn how to just in a healthy, easygoing way express needs or express something directly, right? So take your time, take your time to give space to yourself as you are learning how to be the new you. It's like we're almost training our neural system all over again. We are, you know, coming up against, you know, these different um, things and decisions and experiences throughout our day and we're, we're having to meet it you know, from a, from a space of like, okay, well, what is, what is heal? What is the healed version of me do in this situation? Like if I were like completely like, I don't know, just like <laughs> born again, you know? And, um, my mindset was completely unencumbered by the ego. Like what would I choose? What would love choose? And a lot of the, so we're going to be challenged by familiar, um, assignments as well. It's another thing worth mentioning again. I, I try to keep in mind to like mention this like every every video. But we're in this period of time right now leading up to Rosh Hashanah where the soul is being tested on um, every day. And each day corresponds to one of the 49 levels of the soul. And so you might have like um, familiar lessons come up or even maybe the same test come back again. And, and it's gonna be familiar things because it's going to be either incomplete tests, tests that we might have supposedly failed, you know, so to speak, or continued education where it's like, all right, we're, we're going deeper, we're going into another level here, we're going to, into another layer. So it's gonna be familiar lessons coming up again so that you can meet them this time as your higher self, right? And we're gonna try to meet these tests, challenges, situations with love, with agape love. And that doesn't mean that you're just gonna be the nice people pleaser. 
Um, sometimes love is tough. It just depends. But love is honest. Love is compassionate. Love is kind. Love respects both people's needs and boundaries, you know. Um, love is kind-hearted and generous of spirit and chooses goodness um, and good, the good, the greater good for all. Um, and then we're, we're choosing to show up as love rather than showing up as fear. And fear can present in different ways. Fear can present as arrogance, as self-righteousness, as actual fear, as insecurity, as guilt, as shame, as um, bullying or intimidation. So we're, we're trying to give ourselves the permission to go slow enough not to feel the pressure that we need to jump on something right away or answer somebody right away or react right away. We want to slow down so we can choose with free will how we would like to proactively show up to the situation and in service to whoever or others in front of you, however you want to meet the situation. But you want to use your free will because that's your divine inheritance, right? And that's the thing that makes us more like elevated than the even the angels right it's just that they don't have all of the complications that the 3d world gives us right they don't have the same challenges they don't have the same ego issues that we do they're more just like specific energy personalities that have specific jobs that they just carry out it's more of a frequency thing all right, you guys, I think we covered everything. I think that we're taking our time, taking a breath, pausing and moving slowly so that we get to choose who we're becoming, how we're living this new life, learning how to live this new life so that we can be truly happy and fulfilled and be more in love with life than we've ever been. And be happy and free and just the very least content. <laughs> you don't have to be elated. Just not miserable would be great, huh? <laughs> All right, y'all. I'm tired. I'm going to water my garden and then I'm going to heat up some dinner and then I'm going to go to bed and then I've got a lot of cooking tomorrow. We're doing like snack party at work. So I'm making pigs in a blanket and I think I might, if I can, I'm going to make a funfetti sheet cake because it's my boss's birthday and that's his favorite cake. <laughs> So I want to surprise him with a cake. And he's like, I don't want anybody to make a big deal. I'm like, we're going to make a big deal. <laughs> we're bringing dips, but I get to bring pigs in a blanket because he went ham when we brought stuff for Christmas. There were pigs in a blanket. No pun intended, but pun enjoyed. All right. Signing off, motherfuckers. <laughs> Ciao.